Ireland Assembly, Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly. Everybody happy to be broadcast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do that, Nick? Yep, I think I think we'll be good to go now. They'll have heard that. Okay, so listen, um, first of all, we're, we're still, we've got a quorum. Um, and I can confirm that the committee has been held virtually. Um, so we just want to make sure everybody can see and hear everything that's happening up until now. Is that okay? Just thumbs up, sound. Um, and um, I'm not really used to Starleaf. So I think there's a wee uh, fruit, there's a wee hand or something you put up. But see, Phil, and not just stick your hand and I'll, um, I'll put your name down. Um, the other thing is that I just won't say I've replaced or I'm coming back and we'll pick big John O'Dowd off. So don't know if that's a good thing or not, but anyway, we'll hold judgment on that. But in absence of being here and just recorded, I want to thank John for starting in for me and I want to put my appreciation uh, down for Linda um, for turning in my absence. So um, I just want to get that recorded. Is that okay, folks? So... The only the, the issue Nick is um, has any one else received notice from a member who has delegated authority or another member on their behalf to vote on his or her behalf or I know people give their apologies and we've received notice. I think yes. from Nicola. Yes, that's right, Chair. Uh, Nicola Brogan has delegated her vote to yourself. Um, yeah. If we if we have to divide on anything, so that's the only delegated vote we have. Okay. Um, so, listen, before we get into the, the meeting, just since for the last night before Christmas, and certainly even from the letter that we received from the Speaker, um, we were already discussing, we were ahead of the Speaker in fairness about in, the introduction of hybrid proceedings in the Chamber, and it's become more pressing, certainly, since the escalating trans, transmission of COVID-19. Um, so, apart from the standard... Uh, committee business items, you will see that the agenda has been amended to allow just further discussions and progress on this issue. And I'm sure you will agree it's quite pressing. So following the committee business items, the, we will receive uh, a briefing from the head of communications on the practicalities of introducing hybrid proceedings. And then with the committee's agreement and permission, um, we're going to close the session because we need to receive the briefing in respect to the procedural and the legal issues. Um, so can can I get agreement um, on that? Um, yes. Before, I mean, I, I know people don't like getting into closed sessions, but normally the protocol is if you're getting legal um, advice on issues that you do that and then go back in if it's appropriate. So can I just get the committee's agreement on that before I go ahead? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Signed. Um, so, Nick, just to go through the, the formal session then, um, I have received apologies from Nicola Brogan and I just want to record Morris's just in light of the information that Gary's provided. Yes. Um, no okay. So, the draft minutes of the 16th of December on page, I think they're on page five. Um, but they're somewhere in your pack and just kind of get uh, agreement that those minutes are reflective. Agreed? Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, a matter to raise in, um, that, you know, we would certainly in this committee agree to amend or draft a, a motion to amend Stanton Order 112 bracket safety in relation to the 9.30 uh, a.m. Issue the committee agreed to do this over the Christmas recess period by way of correspondence. Um, as soon as Nick and, and the rest of the, the staff received the legal advice, um, but there certainly does appear to be more detail for the committee to consider than we originally thought. So, what I want to do is propose that we receive a briefing for, from legal services um, uh, regarding this issue. Um, so, it's just to feed that back. So, is that fair enough? Everyone get a right. legal advice on that. Um, the other issue is that the committee motion to amend Stanton Order uh, 110 to allow the Tampi provisions to be extended to the 3rd of July 2021 
hopefully is scheduled for plenary business uh, next Tuesday. Um, Nick, is that still the case? Is that was that scheduled in the business committee yeah. yesterday? Yes, the, that order paper has been issued, so so that is definitely happening uh, next Tuesday. Okay, no worries. So, um, and item agenda four, um, correspondence. You'll see uh, in your packet the audit committee has copied our committee into its call for evidence for expert witnesses in relation to the review of governance and accountability arrangements for the audit office and the public service ombudsman. Um, and also the, is the latest publication of the human rights um, letter, sorry, newsletter. Are, are we content just to note these items? Great. Yeah. Great. Sound. Um, next, I'm going to propose to leave the forward work program other than what we've agreed. So we've agreed to look at further consideration for proxy vote and we've agreed to receive briefings on the LCM procedures. We've also agreed to get a briefing from Legal Services on the 9.30 um, deadline for proxy voting and the revisit our strategic plan. If there's anything else coming out of the briefings that we'll get, we can certainly add that on. Uh, so under the the uh, chairperson's business, item six, I don't have any. Um, and item seven is, do any other members have any business under AOB that they want raised? No, sure. right. Yeah, sure. Can, sorry, can I just, just um, similar to yourself, I just want to place on record, first of all, to welcome you back as chair of the committee. I'm more than happy to hand over the reins. Welcome, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your thanks. But just, just to put on record, to thank the staff, both Nick and, and Stuart, for all their help to me during my time as chair. They were, they were very, very helpful and I certainly couldn't have done it without them. So just thank you to both of them. My well, thank you. Okay, Nick, we're gonna have all that um recorded as well. So even as well as how can you just pass Linda's appreciation on to the rest of the staff? Certainly. Okay. So we're gonna be begin today's briefings and I wanna also confirm before we do that that our next meeting will be Wednesday the third of February at two thirty. Okay, so um, we're going to the these well, the briefing was Susie's open, Stuart or is it all closed? Um, so the briefing with with Susie is open, and then once that's done, and then we then go to the more procedural and legal stuff. We'll then move to the closed session. Okay. Okay. So um, thanks, Stuart, for that. So there are a number of issues and a number of items. Um, that we need to look at in relation to the hybrid proceedings. So you'll see at page 38 of your pack, there's an email from the Chief Whip of the Alliance Party, Kelly Armstrong, requesting that the committee enables remote access to the plenary. So just to note that, uh, page 39 is a press article in relation to this. Page 40, there's a letter from the executive to the speaker, which the chairperson was copied to. The executive is, is interested in what arrangements the assembly may consider for virtual participation in some plenary business. At page 42, the speaker's response to the executive is copied into us, and at page 44 is a letter from the speaker to the committee. The speaker has confirmed that at last week's business committee, there was agreement in principle across all parties to move to facilitate remote participation in plenary sittings. I want to advise members that the former chairs already responded uh, to Kelly Armstrong to inform her that the committee is considering this issue today and in due course I'll write again to notify her of our deliberations and any decisions that we may agree. So are you all content to note these items, the correspondence and indeed the press article? Great. Right. Okay. So, um, Nick, I think at, at this time we can bring Susie in. Um, yes, if, if broadcasting just wanted to bring Susie into the, uh, the main spotlight, and there she is. Okay. So we're joined today by Susie. So she's the head of communications in the assembly and she will brief us on the equipment that is currently being procured and the arrangements for its installation should the committee and the assembly agree to introduce remote participation. Susie, I want to welcome you to our committee. Thank you, um, 
and I also want to advise members that Susie has provided the committee with a proposed layout for screens in the chamber, which is at page 46 of your pack. So Susie, without further ado, do you want to give us a briefing, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity to brief you all um, today. Nice to see you back there, uh, uh, Chair. So this briefing is about installing the Starleaf video conferencing platform um, into the Assembly Chamber to allow members to take part in, in plenary sittings remotely. It covers cost, timeline, um, and the general logistics of getting the system into the Chamber. But just by way of background and context for the briefing, it's important to say that, that at this time, like all public institutions, the Assembly Commission continues to face exceptional challenges as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Assembly members, of course, remain subject to the same health restrictions as the rest of society, um, remain similarly vulnerable to infection. And of course, as public figures, they will want to exemplify the application of social distancing measures. You'll be aware, of course, too, that since March 2020, the Assembly Commission has implemented a wide range of measures to mitigate the risk of the spread of COVID-19 uh, in Parliament buildings itself. That includes the successful installation of Starleaf in all three video rooms, so that's room 2930 in the Senate Chamber. Overall, the feedback on Starleaf has been very positive. Um, it's, it's quickly become a very standard part of all of our committee meetings, and importantly, it has allowed committees to continue to meet um, with more members. Um, and witnesses attending. This in turn, of course, has allowed um, committees to undertake additional work that simply wouldn't have been possible without the technology at the current time. So naturally, attention has now turned to the options of getting Starleaf into the Assembly Chamber to allow hybrid uh, proceedings. Just to, be, just to note, the briefing doesn't look at any of the procedural issues about this. It's purely about um, the technical specifications and considerations, but you'll hear from my colleague later, Paul, later on that. So moving on then to the detailed technical considerations then, each, each chamber and committee room in Parliament buildings has an associated production gallery um, in the basement of Parliament buildings and that essentially controls how the output is broadcast. Our broadcast infrastructure is set up in such a way that the Assembly Chamber and Room 29 share the same production gallery. So what that means effectively is that the Chamber and Room 29 cannot be televised at the same time. However, there's an upside to that. So with this in mind, given the fact that Room 29 already has Starleaf um, installed, we have the option of essentially plugging Room 29's equipment into the assembly chamber infrastructure. So the proposal is to reuse equipment that we already have, Chair. So this means that we don't have to buy a dedicated installation for the chamber, and we think it presents a very positive value for money argument. In terms of cost, although we have already bought the Starleaf equipment, um, there are still some other costs involved that are quite specific for the chamber, and they are um, flat screen TVs, power, cabling, um, mounts, and we always put a bit of contingency in because when we start these projects, we nearly always find that that's something else needs to be done. So depending on the screens that we can source, um, which is a, a, a thing we're working on as we speak, the total cost of um, Starleaf in the Chamber will range from about 14,500 to about 18,000. In terms of procurement, we can procure the equipment under our existing broadcasting contract. And what that means is that we can move really swiftly to get the equipment um, into the building and to get it installed. In terms of time scale, um, as with any project of this type, there will be a lead in time for equipment. We estimate that at about 14 days at the minute. We've already ordered all the cables that we need. So really all we're looking at is TV screens at the minute. You'll be aware um, probably that some suppliers are experiencing difficulties getting um, equipment into Northern Ireland at the minute. So 14 days is indicative until we can get a bit more clarity. But what we have asked our suppliers to do is to inform us urgently if they see that there's going to be any delays in the system. From our perspective, this is a relatively straightforward um, installation as projects go. Um, so once all the kit is here, our in-house contracting team can undertake uh, the work needed to get the Starleaf into the chamber in about three to four days. Naturally, it will be important to note that that work can only be done on non-sitting days um, when the chamber is not in use. So in terms of the chamber itself, we've already identified and agreed the TV positions and how we're going to install the TV screens in the chamber. There'll be two screens behind the speaker's desk, two on both sides of the chamber at the back benches and two at the back of the chamber. 
As the chair said, you have this in your pack, but it's important to note that, that that's the committee layout that you're looking at rather than plenary layout, but the screens will be in the same position, so it doesn't really make any difference, hopefully. We're also going to add a monitor to the speaker's desk so that he can see who's on the call, but we'll make that as neat as possible. And overall, we're, you know, we'll make everything as, as in keeping with the assembly chamber as we possibly can. You'll appreciate, of course, that access to the chamber um, will be very important. So work can only be done, as I say, when the assembly is not sitting, but it's relatively straightforward in terms of mounting the screens and getting the cables in. Just, <clears throat> it's, it'll also be important to note that we haven't done this before. We've done it in committee, but we haven't done it in assembly. So we'll be undertaking significant tests to get the kit in and get it tested. So you might be in a, a plenary meeting where you'll see screens, but the Starleaf system won't be operational yet because we'll be undertaking some tests. So hopefully, Chair, um, members have found that briefing helpful and I'm happy to take any questions. And if I have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And if I don't have the answer to them, I can come back to you through the Chair, if that's, if that's OK. Thanks very much, Susie. Um, straight to the point and very comprehensive. So much appreciated. So I'm going to open it up to anyone for questions. So has anyone any questions for Susie? We like silence. Okay. I can see Linda. Jerry, did you did you put your hand up as well? So Linda, Jerry, and Thomas, did you indicate? You did. Okay. Sorry. Uh, hopefully you indicated in that order. I'm not showing favoritism to Linda Dillon. So um, <laughs> not yet anyway. Linda, go ahead. Mine is just a very quick thing. Thanks a million, Susie, and and thanks for the briefing that you had given myself and the the deputy chair previously. Just in relation to um, the speaker's desk and, and try for for him at the minute, I don't know if there are no she's, but if we're following that on the screen when they're following the chamber, it's very difficult, to, to be honest with you, even in a committee. So I'm just wondering, obviously, will there be a role for whoever's at the top table with the speaker in relation to watching the screen as well? Because it, it can be challenging in a committee where you only have a small number of members. So I've no doubt it would be even more challenging. For, for the the speaker in the chamber. So I'm just I'm just wondering is there a role for the Yes, um Chair, the plan is that as we call them the clerk on the left <laughs> will have a role to play by essentially operating the Starleaf system and liaising directly with the speaker on that. In terms obviously of the procedural issues about how business will be managed, that's yet to be thrashed out. Um but the call will essentially be managed in the room by as we say the clerk on the left. Thank you, Chair. That, that's everything. Thanks a million, Susie. Thanks, Chair. Over to yourself. Thanks, Chair, and welcome back. Um, yeah, thanks, Susie. A uh, couple, of, couple of questions. Um, I raised this last year, Chair, with, with the Commission, and I think it's good that it's moving ahead now, but I was a bit disappointed that you know, we didn't move towards it last year, frankly, but I suppose we are where we are, as they say. Um, Couple of questions, Susie. Uh, sometimes uh, we have a health committee, and I think it's room twenty nine, um, and, and there's um, occasionally, um, I have to say, it's occasionally uh, technical issues, people having to, you know, uh, reconnect and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I wanted to kind of ask, I'm, I'm no way a technical expert, far from it, but has there been extra, uh, if it's Reuters or extra? Um, sort of material put in to, to ensure that, that that doesn't happen in terms of people being supported if they have bad connections or or whatever issues are raised. Um, and then just, uh, yeah, just another point, maybe not, a, maybe not a question, but I suppose, I think we're considering this later on maybe, Chair, sure, but um, I think certainly the idea of um, making it available to people who are uh, not just isolating, I think is important because we're obviously being encouraged and told effectively to stay at home if you can. And if this allows us uh, all to, to stay at home uh, and work from home, uh, then I think that's that's important. So I don't know if that's for this session, but I think that's that's an important point. Thanks. Thanks, Gerald. Um, Linda, or sorry, Susan, do you want to answer that question before I move on to Thomas? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, naturally, connectivity is such a big issue. I know it's been a major issue in, in committees. And, and Chair, there's no video conferencing platform that will, will sort that out. You know, the video conferencing platform is just a platform. Um, but what I can say is that, that, that members, if, if their connectivity is poor, 
they can choose to use the audio element of Starleaf. Um, now, naturally, in the chamber, you would want to be in vision. Um, but if you absolutely can't, you can use the audio to connect. And you, uh, that doesn't have to be a mobile phone connection. That can be a landline connection. Um, so hopefully that answer, answers that question, Chair. Thanks, Susie. It's just that, uh, you know, it's like a black hole up there sometimes, as you will know. I know. I mean, you to get a, a, a phone on your mobile. Sometimes you have to walk around. I know certainly up on the third floor. Uh, and I'm kind of close to Jerry's room, but sometimes you have to walk around to a corner to get a, a good reception. So uh, um, it's probably just a, the kind of construction of the building and all the rest. But certainly if it's an issue that keeps cropping up, we're going to have to deal with it. But as it is... All been well, Chair. The people who will be contributing via Starleaf will be at home, possibly with a better broadband yeah. than we have yeah. Parliament building, yeah, I think, no. and everybody's paying for that. So it, it ultimately depends on the connectivity of where the member is 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 participating from. And and can I ask just a supplementary to that, Susie? Say, for example, you know, a lot of our colleagues here are living in rural communities where broadband is a massive issue. If they need additional support with Wi-Fi Wi-Fi boosting, can we also build that in? Um, well, so for example, I know you've probably put contingency in. But I, I would actually increase it. I'm not, and I know the commission's probably going to faint at me saying this, but certainly um, colleagues living in rural communities are so much at that disadvantage. Like I'm living in practically the Belf, city centre of Belfast. And at times, I, if there's more than three in our house, my Wi Fi just goes. Um, but, um, but thankfully, usually during the day, it doesn't happen. But see, rural colleagues, they have had great difficulty. And I, I just think this whole COVID stuff's been hard enough. And the last thing we need them is to be further updated because of connectivity. So if we can just pack that in, Susie, I'd really appreciate it. Well, Chair, just, just while we're on that, and, and so that we're not giving anybody heart attacks, um, our colleagues in IT have added webcams to MLAs, um, PCs, to allow them to use Teams and Starleaf. Um, but I can certainly pass the concerns back to our colleagues in, in IS by boosting that. And we're always happy to have contingency boosted from a broadcasting perspective, Chair. <laughs> Great answer, TV. Sorry, Thomas, you're next. OK, thank you, Chair, and welcome back. Um, Susie, th thanks for the um, presentation. And now that the ball is rolling, and given that all runs fairly smoothly as far as the equipment now is concerned, What's the target time for having this up and running? Well, as I said in the, in the briefing, Chair, wholly dependent on, on delivery times and all the rest of it. We're saying 14 days at the minute um, because that's what we've been given as delivery times. Now, as I say, what we've been able to do is already order some kit um, that we're assured will be with us in less than that time. Um, and they're going to let us know if there are any delays on that. It's really the screens that we're looking at at the minute. Um, but we're optimistic that that will be could even be slightly less than 14 days. I wouldn't want to overpromise and under, under deliver on that one, Chair. But the screens are really the slightly tricky, but not insurmountable. So we're aiming for a lead-in time of about 14 days maximum, Chair. Is that from today, Susie, or from this week, or is it from next week? Really, from about it's well, we have already ordered some kit in. So if we uh, that's really from about today, if we're looking at screens. But as I say, I'd rather. I'd rather say it takes 14 days and get them in 11 than say I'll get them to you in 11 and then they don't turn up in 14. Okay, so Thomas, we're probably talking about the start of February really then? But Chair, what I, what I will also assure you is that we have um, the suppliers that we are contacting, um, we're leaving them in uncertain terms that this is a business critical issue for the legislature. So they're aware of the fact of the importance of the project. Um, and I'm happy to say that you know, the stuff that we have ordered, we've ordered. Um, and once the kit gets here, uh, touch wood and fingers crossed, it's a relatively straightforward installation from my perspective. Yes, Susie, you've said that twice. And each time you said it, I'm touching wood as well. Um, <laughs> everything crossed here, Chair. Thomas, are you happy enough with that response? Yeah, OK, yeah, thanks. Great man. Gary or Rosemary, do you want brought in? Yeah, I have my hand up there. Sorry, Rosemary. You can't see Okay, no, no, it's not not a problem. It, it's just again, I would have concerns a little bit about our life because again, I'm on the the 
Cultural Environment Committee. And quite often it breaks down. You can't hear. Uh, there's lots of different times when it hasn't been that successful. And to be quite honest, sometimes, and I don't, I'm sure, I'm sure the the assembly won't let me hear it saying it. But sometimes Zoom meetings are more successful than having Starlight Starlight meetings. Basically, given the breakdowns there are occasionally. I know Zoom's out of the question, but I'm just uh, just concerned about Starlight sometimes. Okay, Chair, uh, th this isn't a surprise. Chair, you know, we have heard this a lot, and given that Starlink was relatively new to all of us, I don't know um, your particular circumstances, but what, what, what we have certainly found is that most of the issues are about connectivity, not about the platform itself, um, and hopefully the, 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 the addition of webcams um, to PCs might, might be that a bit. But it's difficult to say at this stage, Rosemary, because I'm not sure of what your personal circumstances are and what experience you've had with Starlink, but we generally find it's a bit um, in the platform. Yeah, my personal circumstances were sitting in the chamber in Star sitting in the room twenty nine in Stormont. Yeah. Um, you you know, getting connected with other people was sometimes very difficult. Right. Okay. It's difficult. It's difficult to to, to diagnose at, at the mat. Um, what I will say. What what I'll, what I'll also say just on that chair is that there are lots of there are lots of issues that external people have. With the systems, you know, people dialing in, um, if that are uh, departmental officials, etc., um, and we work very closely with them because there's a lot of issues about firewalls and going through our systems or whatever. But as I say, it's very difficult to diagnose it just on the hoof like this. But um, I take your point that it's, it's maybe not perfect for everybody there, but we've we've successfully worked it in committees and, and that's a proposal that we're looking at for the future at the moment. Um, Sinead or Gary, have you any questions? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, thanks, no, thanks, Gary. And, and apologies because I, I did um, hear the starting presentation, then I had to leave for a wee while there, Susie. And, and, and apologies if it has come up. But I um, I have used Starlink quite regularly to committee, and what I've found is that the the remote access, all of those who are joining remotely, um, their their sound overrides the committee room so it only takes one member that's remotely connected to not unmute their microphone and then all I can hear is that one person at the committee room. Now the problem is that I can understand Susie how from the committee room that appears that everything's flowing well but I have no way of communicating if, if that person's in spotlight I have no way of even indicating that I can't hear or communicating directly to the IT person who is managing Spotlight. So it is something to do with the Starlink system as opposed to the strength of my connectivity. That's not the problem. There isn't that connection. I have no way of indicating. You really are silenced out and you don't hear the committee room. So I do have that problem with it. And I also did wonder, I know the big screen for coming in, and I don't know if you mentioned this, Susie, but the, there are we speakers on our desk in the chamber. Is that where it's, I presume the sound would be coming from the speaker as opposed to the actual um, television screens? Yes, Chair, the, the, this, the audio will come through the PA, which is already in, in, in the chamber. And just, just on the sound, um, Sinead, in, in the chamber itself, it's slightly different than what it'll be in committee rooms. Um, we have much more control over audio in the chamber because it's manually operated by an actual physical operator in the chamber. Um, so in terms of microphones muting and unmuting, naturally, if you're in the audience, your, your microphone will be muted and then you're brought into the spotlight. But, you know, if there is noise or there's interference or whatever, that microphone can be manually overridden by someone whose who's, who's pure role is to, to manage the sound in the chamber. Um, I would also say about alerting, there's the hand raise function as well. I'm not sure what the issue in committee was. It's, it's difficult to say. But there's the hand raise function if you have an issue. Um, and as I say, in, in the chamber, we will be moving to have, to have the Starleaf operation operated in the chamber as opposed to operated by someone sitting outside of the chamber which is where some of the delays and problems have come from in the past yeah well to be to be fair thanks susie but to be fair the hand raise system does work in terms of but to be fair to the chair in any of those circumstances the chair 
is during the meeting, they're not experiencing the problem that we've been silenced or sounded out. They may see our hand raised and they will come to us at the appropriate time. But at mm -hmm. that stage, then they're coming to you to speak, to give commentary on something that's maybe passed for 20 minutes. Oh, so the business, the business that you wanted to talk about has already passed? And you haven't heard it, you know, because the person hadn't unmuted. So there needs to be either a way of me as a member muting the member choosing to mute the member who has not unmuted their microphone. I can't do that. Or a way of me communicating to the IT person who has got the ability to mute to do it. Well, but I'm I, okay with that. I can put the hand raise up, but then I'm just waiting for my turn, if you like. Okay, the business yeah. might have come back to you. I, I think we're also going to need to bring out even just an introduction for all chairs as well, because it's 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 a terrible when people aren't muted. It just impacts on everyone else in the virtual room. So certainly we can look at something like that on our correspondence and bring you know send it back. because um, I think you see up a lot. Yeah, just I mean when we when we introduced Starleaf in, into committees, we we did we had a lot of guidance. We can certainly replicate that, and that that called. Paul's presentation, which is coming after mine, will probably feed into that. Um, but just to assure you, I mean, we have to test it, and we certainly know we can get the screens in, and we certainly know we can make this work, but we, we need to test it and find out how it's all actually going to work in, in reality. Um, but just to assure you that we have a lot more control over signed in the chamber than we do in committee. But I'll certainly take those points on board, Chair, and feed them back. Um, and in terms of guidance, ultimately, um, not only guidance, but we're, we're also very happy to set up test calls with the year as well just to make them comfortable until they get up and running with the system thank you stacy gary finally yourself oh. gary you there chair apologies ironically it, it, it is just frozen um, <laughs> as I put it, but this is the difficulties of being uh, rest of the province, I suppose, and uh, this is some of the challenges we have to face. And I do appreciate that that's a, a connectivity issue as opposed to maybe the platform. So I do take that point. And uh, we have found um, for our um, our economy committee, what we've done, we tend to operate a, a WhatsApp group. It's quite informal in a sense, but we find that that works well in terms of communication. So maybe we get the the speaker on the WhatsApp and we can uh, let them know when we're looking to come in. In terms of the practicalities of the actual layout of the chamber, mm -hmm. um, the layout of the chamber, it has nobody in the back row in terms of this particular layout. Is there anything to stop people sitting in the back row? Um, I see in this, this chart that I'm looking at, everybody is either in the front row or the middle row. Is the back row out of bounds because of the screens? Gary, just to just to say that the the committee, the, the pack that the the drawing that's in your pack is a committee layout. It's not a plenary layout, um, but the screens are in the position. So no, there's nothing to stop them at all, and they should have line of sight of both the screens behind the speaker and both of the screens on each side. So the layout that you're looking at is for committees in the chamber as opposed to plenary in the chamber. So not nothing to stop them at all. No, that's fine. Thanks. Uh, and another question, Susie, I'm not too sure if, if you answer this or maybe Paul, but in terms of the mechanism, so say, for example, question time comes up and there's 15 members of question time. Do so and say five of those are going to be attending virtually. Effectively, do they would they be like in a queuing system? So they, they would be tuned in for question time at 2 o'clock. They can watch the proceedings on their... Uh, laptop or computer, and then be brought in just as and when their their time slot becomes available. Is that the way it would work? Or? Well, my understanding at the minute, Chair, is that it's really for the speaker to decide what business will be transacted using the Starlink platform. So whether it's question time or whether it's full debates or whatever. So I imagine that's more not that I'm ducking the question, Chair, but I, but I think that's probably more of a, a question for the procedural side. And my colleague Paul Gill will hopefully pick up with you later on in the in the in the meeting on that one. Thanks for yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Gary, so, I, no, no, I was just going to say that, that those are relevant points because uh, everything is very much, well, it works alongside the clock. And I imagine that if, you know, we spend five minutes trying to hear, you know, hear what somebody's saying, very soon the 30 minutes for question time will be gone. It'll be just interesting to see how that works in practicalities. But like everything else, you know, we'll have to make it work. 
you know, the reality is we're not in normal times, so we have to just try and make it work as best as we can. So, you know, thanks, uh, Susie. Okay, no problem. And I think it just under underlines the importance of testing. Um, yeah. There on, on you know getting getting the screens in and getting the technology up and running is one thing, um, but we've really got to test, test, and test again because that's what we had to do with committees. It was new then, um, and we're we're working much more seamlessly now. But we will have to undertake very significant testing. Um, but that's all part of any any project, so no problem with that. Thanks for the questions. Thank you, Susie. Yeah, I mean, it, we, we have absolutely no doubt that it will be tested and tested and tested again. Uh, but certainly, you're right. Um, there's a couple of questions that Paul Gill will certainly need to answer on the procedural issues. Um, has everyone got the opportunity to ask Susie a question? Is all happy to move on? Yeah? Yes, thanks, Susie. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay, so members, as I said at the start of the committee, we're going to now move into closed session. And we're going to advise members that Paul Gill will now brief the committee on the procedural issues of implementing hybrid proceedings in the chamber. And that Jonathan McMillan, Head of Legal Services, is also available to answer any questions if required. Um, and at page 48 of your pack is a paper from the clerk. So, Paul, um, sorry, Nick, I can't see on this screen. Uh, is Paul in? Um, yes. Jonathan, um, they are? Yes, so I think Paul and Jonathan will now be brought in by broadcasting and uh, hopefully they should they should come up, um, but I, I think they should be ready to start. Okay. okay, thanks very much. Chair, hopefully you can see and hear me, okay? We can. Thank you, Paul. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29.